Hey guys, welcome back to the game room, and nice to see you. It's been a while. I don't normally do cold openings for Big Game Hunter, but I figured it's been an entire month. I thought I should do something to at least explain myself a little bit. Uh, I will get into it pretty quickly here, though, but essentially, just had a really rough beginning of 2015. Some things happened that made making videos not feel as important to me, and I didn't want to make a video unless I really felt into it. Uh, but lately, it's been getting a lot better, and uh, I've been wanting to make content again after an entire month off. Uh, I'm not going to promise anything like I did before about how often I'm going to be making videos, uh, how many reviews are getting made, the new series and all that, but I do plan on doing a bit more uh, as I can, as I feel up to it. I hope you guys don't mind if it's a slower pace than normal. Uh, it's going to be a better pace than nothing for a month, so uh, hopefully any pace at this point will be a little bit of an improvement. So with that said guys, I hope you enjoy this episode of Big Game Hunter. Not an amazing amount of finds, but found some new locations, had a lot of fun, and uh, had a new co-pilot along for the ride, so check it out guys. I'll see you on the other side. So as normal, we're starting at the North Lamar location, the biggest, the baddest, the most trivial pursuitinist location out there. But we actually do have some stuff here. We have Arena Maximus. This is one of Fantasy Flight's silver line of games from the early and mid 2000s. This is one I've actually wanted for a while, a chariot racing game. I haven't heard great things, but something I was interested in. Uh, the normal stuff here, lots of party games, lots of multiples of games, a couple of Battle of the Sexes, a bunch of Scenets, got your Monopolies, your Twisters, your Craniums, uh, your Texas Trivia, that's awesome, Dr. Dreadful, actually that, that I kind of regret not getting, uh, Hangman, and uh, up here we do have something else though, we have Warhammer Invasion, now this is an LCG, one of the first LCGs before they really called them LCGs, from Fantasy Flight, and uh, yeah, I'm actually interested in this one because I got a bunch of uh, Warhammer uh, Invasion stuff before I went to BGG Con back in November of 2014. Tons of puzzles, a bunch of crap, but yeah, I have a few extra board games down here, including Axis and Alice D-Day, and oh my, the biggest, the baddest, I am Vlad. Uh, I left out the worst. This game is completely terrible. Uh, I would not buy it even for whatever it was charged, like 15 bucks or something. It is enormous. I actually came back later uh, on a return trip, and we're just going to mash it all together since it's been so long. Uh, I found Wits and Wagers Family. We got Smiley Face and Fortuna. Uh, so have some finds here. Nothing that's really stand out to me. Uh, Resistance Avalon, which is an awesome game. Uh, one I already own, though. Probably the best version of Resistance, and uh, Resistance being an amazing game. I definitely recommend it. Uh, got a lot of the normal stuff. It, as you can see, some things have changed around a bit. I should have gotten that copy of Beyond Balderdash because I still do not have a copy, and it is a great party game. And I'm going to say that every time I pass it up because I always pass it up. Uh, but we found some things. It looks like they are bringing in some uh, Z-Man games and Mayday games uh, that are brand new and some Legos in the game section. That's really odd, actually. Uh, again, something I probably regret not buying. Uh, and in the rare game room, not a ton of turnover. We still have the Twilight Imperium expansion, but we do have a copy of History of the World. But they wanted like 80 bucks for it. Yeah, I'm not, not biting on that, although that is the coolest version. Uh, so we have South Amar here. This is the other location, one I really enjoy. And uh, got a few things here. They actually had a nice little restock uh, pretty recently. Uh, some games here. Philip is actually here with me on this day, I believe. Uh, he's my new co-pilot running around with me in quite a bit of these, these uh, videos. And we've got a copy of Revolution, and he's got a copy of Thunderstone Expansion, which I already had at the time. Uh, Revolution is an awesome game that uh, was later put out by uh, Steve Jackson Games, but that is the Pegasus Spiel version, the actually fully German version, uh, and a really awesome looking version. I kind of wish I'd gotten that. Uh, Risk 2210 AD, uh, one I already own as well, but a, a solid game. I really enjoy that one. Uh, found a few more euro -y games here. Uh, we got some old Avalon Hill Dust Jacket game. I don't think I knew what it was. We got Horus, which I was actually pretty close to getting, but it is actually a demo copy from uh, one of the local stores, and it was missing a piece or missing the rule. I think it was missing a piece or something. I don't think I would have passed it on for missing the rules. Uh, Hiss, uh, one of those card games you see pretty much everywhere. Uh, I think this is like Bakugan. I don't know why I was really interested in that, but at the time, I think it was because of the magnet case. And I actually found this l cool little Flames of War box set. Uh, Flames of War is a World War II miniatures game, and uh, I've actually been interested in playing it. It's kind of, what I understand, it's like the Warhammer 40k of World War II, so it's not super accurate, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, but this is not the starter. I thought it might be the starter, and it is not. It's actually a scenario box. 
Uh, I did find a copy of Robot Turtles as well, but it wasn't much lower than MSRP, so I passed on that. Uh, a lot of passes here, guys. Sorry about that, but I uh, just can't buy it on everything. Think some things are interesting, some things uh, I just don't want to afford. Uh, Shaolin Showdown is a, a, a dead collectible card game. I ended up not getting that, but I usually buy those. I've actually seen it cheaper, oddly enough, than like three bucks. I've seen like 99 cents for a starter, so I had to pass that up. But uh, yeah, get found in Memoir 44. I did end up cutting that open to see what it was. Uh, that just it was just taped up on. I must say, cut it open. Uh, but it was it was one already on. I think it was Eastern Front or something like that. So yeah, nothing in the card games. Got some Canasta, some some of the normal old stuff. Uh, over in the RPG section, we have a copy of Warhammer Online. That's kind of notable just to, for the fact that it comes with the Warhammer miniature, but I already own that, so uh, not a big deal. A bunch of action figures and stuff like that. This kind of had like a 90s vibe to it. We, there was uh, some uh, Shadow Fist cards up there, uh, which is pretty cool. And I found some Magic cards. I wanted 20 bucks for them, a bunch of old ones. Uh, I actually almost got it just for the little Magic card uh, booklets in there, but not worth it. This is uh, the newer location. I think I showed this in the last video. Uh, but this time I actually found some stuff. Uh, we were looking around. Uh, not a ton of things here. This is a smaller board game section. But uh, it's fairly well stocked, I would say. At least in general. Uh, to yeah, th th We found the Oz deck building game. I didn't actually end up getting that one in particular. Uh, but I'd heard some things about it. I believe this was kickstarted originally. So it was kind of odd that I found it here. Uh, the art looked kind of interesting, uh, it was a little bit pricey for a theme that I didn't care as much about, so I ultimately left it, but uh, that was one I was on the fence about, I was really close to one to get. And then I actually found a copy of Legacy Gears of Time, this is a game by uh, Floodgate Games, it's a time travel game, and time travel is a theme in games that I wish was used a little bit more often, uh, so I grabbed that, I did pick that one up. And another return trip. I actually found some more stuff here as well. Uh, this is Revolution Anarchy. This is actually the newest expansion to Revolution. Uh, once again, I mentioned I liked that game quite a bit. That is the Steve Jackson version of the expansion, of course. Really fun game. I almost picked up Nightmare Chess. I've actually heard that is a good variant to chess. Uh, but I ended up passing that up because I'm just not that interested in a bunch of chess variants. Uh, oddly enough, who would have thought? Uh, but yeah, generally just not a ton more there, but it was pretty cool. I, I do like that this new location is continuing to give us some some interesting finds. I was really kind of surprised to find that Revolution expansion here so early uh, since it's been, it hasn't been out that long. Now I did uh, jump back to Hastings in San Marcos here. Uh, if you've seen my vlogs, you'll know I was waiting on Flashpoint to drop in price because I knew it would, and huzzah, it has $16. I ended up picking up a second copy. And our last stop of the day is Savers, it's a new location for me, but it's a thrift store kind of like Goodwill. And their board game section is actually well organized and very reasonable. Found a copy of Risk Battlefield Rogue, uh, $1.99, great price for that game. That's actually a decent game. There's not a lot else here, I actually have Rogue already, but it's nice to see a well organized thrift store board game section. Uh, I am, I'm honestly shocked. When I came in here, I was expecting it to be a lot like Goodwill, which historically has been total crap and felt like I was going to get a disease. So I'm extremely happy to have a thrift store that I'm actually kind of comfortable in that seems to have well-priced games and well-organized games. So I'm definitely going to make this part of the rotation, probably replacing Goodwill, uh, but you know I can never replace you Goodwill. And over here we have the clamshell version of my childhood and our ever-present patron saint of hunting, Shaq in Kazam, uh, Academy Award winner from 1994. And we found uh, Mario Kart, this lunchbox, pretty sweet little deal. Uh, it was a little expensive for a dented lunchbox though, so I passed it up. So there you have it guys, not a humongous haul, but I think a pretty quality haul. I used a little bit of discretion this time and didn't uh, just buy things willy-nilly. I kind of decided that I didn't need everything that I saw this time, which is pretty rare for me. Uh, I promise I'll never do it again. You'll only get the best and most insane amounts of hauls in the future. So let's take a look at those prices.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I didn't collect a lot of pictures to use uh, for your guys' hauls this month, so I thought I'd do another outro here. Uh, as always, I appreciate you watching, and if you'd like to check out more videos as they come out, or our old videos, you can subscribe up here. Uh, you can check us on social media at WG Tabletop on Twitter, Weapons Great Fit Channel on Facebook, and on Instagram we have WG Tabletop as well. All those links are in the description below. And if you'd like to support us monetarily, I do have a Patreon as well. Uh, we actually have new back rewards, which I'm going to be putting a video out for pretty soon as well. I'm really excited about those pretty cool weapons great dice. So guys, as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time in the game room.